Perfect. Okay. So recording should be okay. commencing. Okay, Nikki, over to you. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to just give a really brief introduction to this back of an envelope evening. Um, I um, have been involved in the back of the envelope uh, in terms of actually doing the selection. I mean, everybody that um, applied uh, got at least one piece in. And then, um, so I was part of that panel with Kat, Pat and Rachel. Um, but I have been running the uh, actual monthly Instagram exhibition, which has been great, really um, just so vibrant and exciting. Um, our first Blue Monkey exhibition ever. And um, just seeing all different types of artwork and um, yeah, just a really positive experience, really. Um, my only feedback always was that they uh, probably took more time than doing a physical exhibition, but that's that's learning in terms of Instagram as well. But um, so I'm going to um, hand over to Pat and um, she's going to give us the slides where we've got, I think we've got one slide um, or one piece of work from everybody who took part. Uh, I think Kat, Pat, and I will all sort of interject as we go through. And we may ask you if you're here to talk about your work, in which case, if we do, or we may do it at the end, could you then put your speaker on? But we'll let you know. Um, and we thought if you could, if you've got any specific questions, put them at the chat, in the chat, which is at the bottom. And Kat's gonna keep an eye on that. And then if we don't have time to talk about them during the actual talk, we'll pick all that up at the end. So I think it's going to be about 45 minutes or so. Um, so then we'll have um, any questions and then we're going to go over to Robert to talk a little bit about uh, a, a subset of these pieces which are going to be in another exhibition. So I think that's everything. So I'm just going to hand over to Pat and her screen share. Thank you. Thank you. So, there you go, desktop. Oh, no. Here we are. Thank you, Robert. There we go. Can everyone see? There we go. Wonderful. And I've got a lot of lighting at the top. Um, but, uh, yes, there we go. But you can all see. Right. Well, first of all, um, yes, we're just positioning the the page better that's right um fabulous first of all thank you very much nikki for your instagram explosion of back of envelope throughout every day it was wasn't it in may well, fantastic but um i'm first you can see me there uh, this was 2019 i think hang on i need to see the bottom of the page yeah, it's, it's kind of when the pandemic had started yeah it? it was our kind of first so during the, the pandemic we were kind of you know trying to keep ourselves motivated so we would stage these um exhibitions um in rachel's house and try and do it as if we were going to have people coming to see it well, of course no we, we couldn't go to any exhibitions <laughs> but, so we decided to have one of our own and set ourselves a project yeah. which was back of an envelope so um and here's robert with more examples particularly his work i think behind him and uh no it was great fun and it kept us motivated for quite a little while during lockdown which was great um, and uh, that was also the beginning of Edgeland Modern. Uh, and we decided to put a few, we had a, a, a few um, exhibitions about once every couple of months, we put on a little show. Um, we did the COVID one. We did the COVID one and um, a stage yeah. we did as a theme uh, that we all responded to. And uh, so we felt that Edgeland Modern had a bit of mileage and it's now going to be transferred to New Haven. Um, but uh, anyway, let's get kick off. Then, of course, uh, late last year, um, Margaret Mellis had her show. And much to my surprise, because I had no idea that she had done uh, a, a series of work on the back of an envelope, there were about 30 pieces in a, a special room 
off the main gallery um, with all her pieces she'd done over quite a long period of time, like um, from the 50s to the 90s. I mean, it was amazing. Um, she obviously was very fond of this um, back of an envelope and uh, she'd obviously kept interesting envelopes to work on. They were all on the theme of flowers um, and uh, but it showed her interest in the, the lining, but obviously, as well as the shape which she filled, utilised the entire shape of the envelope. Um, she was obviously equally fascinated by the textures of the lining of the envelope as well. Um, and uh, so this really inspired us to do the open call. Um, Did you know what they painted with that? I don't know. I, I kind of have a feeling they must have been, some of them are crayon actually. Oh. I think some were pen, like, look like colour yeah. pencils, some and, and, were just simple, like acrylic or something I think. Yeah. Very much in the spirit of what's to hand. I mean that's the beauty of the envelope, when you're looking for a piece of paper, you can always find an envelope and tear it open and, 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 uh, and there it is to uh, record your idea fresh from your imagination. Um, so yes, I think she, she used pencils, pens, wax crayons, all sorts, whatever was available. Um, and there was um, a, a really good response from our open call and from a surprisingly wide area, as well as our lovely Blue Monkey members um, and, and Sussex generally and friends of friends, um, it seemed to attract people from all over like um, Europe and the next one, this one, Indonesia, um, which was very exciting. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, examples sent to us from America, Portugal, um, Germany, Belarus, you know, all sorts. Um, so it was very exciting to have these uh, uh, India, we had quite a few from India. I love this one in uh, that it's, it's, it's trundling along, going somewhere like envelopes and letters do. Um, and uh, I like the way um, the text and the writing turns, goes round the corner and like people when they did airmail letters years ago would, would um, uh, fill the entire space and even write ac across the previous text. But uh, so this I thought was very charming. There also quite the suggestions of narrative. I mean, so they're on holiday, but yeah. why is there a vacancy? Or they're looking for <laughs> yes. somewhere to stay. stay. Yes, looking for places, yeah. keeping an eye out for vacancy yes. notices in the window. Yeah, it's great. Um, and of course, then this lovely one, uh, again, fills the entire space um, and in, depicts an enormous space, which is what I love about this. Um, and, uh, and I mean, uh, Samantha is here tonight. Do you want to have a, do you want to just tell us a little bit about the piece, Samantha? I know it's very much in your, you've kept it very much as part of your practice and done. Yes. Are you there? there? Uh, well, gosh, I wasn't expecting to, <laughs> to talk about it. Uh, yeah, that, I, it's, I was re um, it's always really interesting to hear what someone else has picked up looking at your piece. So I, I think that's really interesting what you, that you <clears throat> picked up of a small from a small space. I've depicted quite a large oh, space. Yeah. Which of course I have. I, yeah, it, but it, basically it was, it, it's, it, I, you know, one of my things that I like painting, I suppose, uh, uh, is the is the coastline and particularly the female swimmers or the 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 everyday swimmers, year round swimmers that kind of take up that space. And and so it was a, I, I think it was the colour um, of the of the background that sort of muted grey. Mm. To me, that was that 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 was sort of that they're the colours I work with very often when I'm when I'm painting the the swimmers because they're the colours of the coastline, particularly in the winter or on a sort of drizzly day um, in St Leonard. So that's yeah. kind of, it all. It, it, I don't know. I don't, I can't remember really why I thought oh I'm going to do that, but it just sort of. 
I guess it's something that I work, I, I, it's something that interests me and, and particularly, as I say, the lining of the, um, of the um, envelope, so. I love the way as well, it, it still looks like it's a framed piece. It's sort of, <laughs> it, you know, it looks very finished, doesn't it? It's sort of, yeah. you, you haven't got the sort of tatty torn edges. It, it just looks yeah. very composed, it's lovely. Well, I've just literally had that framed because it's going to go in a show in the Rye Bank. Oh, really? Um, oh, fantastic. And, oh, brilliant. And it's oh. it really, it, it's, um, that was an interesting thing. Okay, here is my envelope. Now I've got to put it in a frame. What, how do I, yeah. And it took, we took quite a while to sort of get the right colored background and obviously not frame up over any of the envelope. Well, exactly, yeah. I'm glad you didn't. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been awful because yeah. it's part of it, obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it looks super now, actually. I'm really pleased with it. Oh, so we won't have it for our, our um, physical show. Oh, I didn't. Well, I don't well, think we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm not <laughs> sure who's being selected. It has to be said. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm glad. I'm glad it's had mileage for you. This project. Yes, I've really enjoyed it. Good. Thank you. Um, right, I'll up now. The, the bar. I'm just going on to the next one. Um, uh, which is. Um, uh, Richard Rawlins, um, who uh, is famous for his work with hospital rooms, um, whereby artists are invited to uh, decorate walls in um, so, uh, uh, psychiatric hospitals, um, as well as being, he, he, he's a, he exhibits all the time in London, um, but uh, he's known to me on Instagram for his work in hospital rooms. But he uh, produced this great piece of work, which I, I love it because it's, it seems to be inspired by the torn edge of the envelope, even though his envelope isn't particularly torn. Um, but he, he says that in Trinidad, uh, most people have these shards of glass um, on their outer walls to deter thieves. Um, but uh, I think it was, a, it was an apt choice for his uh, submission and uh, a great one. And you can see some more of his work in the background, which is great. Uh, so thank you, um, Richard Mark Rawlins. Um, I'll go to the next one. Oh, maybe I just scroll, yeah. And here we have another um, piece that um, this artist had obviously been inspired by um, the NHS during lockdown, because I think... Well, actually, she is a anaesthetist. Ah, is she indeed? As, as well as an artist, yes. So, right, yeah. I think she did, it was something to do with what had happened in her day. I've, I've forgotten what it is that she's digging out, was being dug out, but I think it might be a spleen, a spleen or something. It oh, wasn't. right. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. really, it was her work that was yeah. inspiring it. Marvellous. Great. Oh, I'm glad we got that one then. Um, and then this one is a lovely collage piece. Um, and I like the way it's been mounted on black, so you can really appreciate all those torn edges. Yeah. Um, and uh, this, I mean, this shape is lovely. Isn't it? Yes, it's great. Yeah, you've got the sort of uh, manufactured edge as well as the torn edge. Um, and I think some, some other collaged bits and pieces um, on top, intriguing. Um, and this one, again, I think this is the group of the torn edge. Um, it's amazing how each opened envelope seems to um, display such a sort of mountainous horizon um, of, on its torn edges. Uh, but this one is, is exploring the, the fold that you get in the envelope, which is great. Um, and, uh, and the window. Um, which I think works really well. Um, and then we come to another uh, draw, lovely drawing, um, uh, one of three that uh, she submitted. Um, and again, very evocative at that time when we, we couldn't see our loved ones um, as often as we wanted to, and especially if they're in hospital. And uh, I think this probably um kept her communication going well with her her mother from uh when she was in hospital 
um, and, uh, and it's quite delightful. I like the way she's kept this red and uh, drawn just in black pen. Yeah, the red is really, it's, it's very red. intense, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, very powerful. Uh, Nikki, I expect you would like to talk a little bit about this, but I think it's, I think it's a, a great example of this um, sort of vintage envelope with all those wonderful, it's celebrating all the, the postage paraphernalia um, of the stamp, and um, the physical stamp, but also the printed stamp. Um, yeah, they were, um, so both these actually come from um, sort of an archive of stuff I've got from clearing my mother's house, which is, these are um, my grandfather's envelopes, if I remember correctly. And um, the, the one on the left is made up of a few of them. And it was just lovely to, I just sort of happened to look in this other big brown envelope and found these and I thought, oh, that's nice, what's underneath? And they've just been reused so many times with a sort of sticky label put on <laughs> the front. Really that sort of 1940s kind of saving everything and reusing yeah. it. And my grandfather was really stingy anyway. And so he would <laughs> always have reused everything. So he'll have loved the fact that I'm now reusing it again or something. Yeah. Like but there was so much going on there. And I loved that, um, the post office stamp, which said, don't waste, hey. um, don't waste bread. <laughs> Others need it. And I just thought it felt really sort of like where we're at now. It was just Absolutely. Like, you know, quite political. Uh, post-war, um, quite a lot going on. And um, my my grandparents, it sort of says, you can just see at the top, it says tea rooms. And my grandparents had moved down from Yorkshire. So there's a sort of a Bradford stamp, which is sort of my roots. And, um, and they moved to Kent. And there's another stamp on here with Kent. So it kind of is quite a sort of family piece, really, and mentions their tea rooms. It's got some recipes on it as well, because um, they were both chefs, my grandparents. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then the other one was another envelope, which was actually empty, which I opened up, which just said reference on it. And there was no reference inside it. And I thought, <laughs> oh, if that had been a reference about my grandfather, I'd love to have read it, because he was he really was really controversial and really just not a very pleasant person, to be honest. So <laughs> I would have liked to have seen it. But anyway, so I made it. To be, rather than be very masculine, which is what he was, and sort of very much, you know, a woman's place is in the home, I tried to um, just kind of give a little hint of that, but, you know, use some more of my found words, really, as part of that. So, yeah, and I just loved how grubby it was as well. Yes. It really had a had a life, I suppose. It certainly has. Yes, the ageing on that paper is absolutely lovely, and along the folds, and mm. you know, it's got real patina. Yeah, so what if that reference, maybe it was a good reference and he'd kept it for so long because it's it's obviously just been kept, but then at some point yeah, that's disappeared what was inside it. So, yeah. Excellent. And Thank is, you. Vicky, is there, is this a picture of your mother? Uh, no. Um, so this is um, from another archive I have, which is somebody else's photos. I, I use her all the time in, um, in my pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So not my mother. <laughs> Oh, so she's a favourite. She she appears in lots of yes, because I have a I have like a, a mass of, of slides and photographs of this particular lady. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she'd be very pleased. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is another lovely one uh, with with a lot of humour involved um, and uh, and a lot of postage stamps. But um, I love the way the, the drawing is an extension of the. Oh, that's, um, the fabulous. that's amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I know Dory is here. She wanted to say anything about it, but I mean, I agree. It's just, it's just they're so funny. Um, I don't know if people can read out or see the words. If not, we can probably read them out to you. But yeah. um, you know, that whole thing about the Royal Academy and how the selection committee works, and sort of treating the envelope like it's the envelope selection process, and I, it, it's just and the stamps as little paintings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then the other one I think is called Royal Mail, um, M A L E. So obviously, <laughs> Charles here, and yeah, just just really fun. Great, um, and this one um, is the one from uh, Belarus, um, and uh, extraordinary um, postage stamp marks um, as, as, and. Uh, and quite interesting that the semi-obscuring of the address 
Um, and I'm not really quite sure uh, what's going on inside this, um, this spilt cup, whether it's a coffee cup or, or a giant uh, communications tube or what it is, but um, yeah, and then you've got this bird of prey, uh, cross between bird of prey and a human, Yes, very interesting. Yes, and the way it, yeah. it plays with those stamps, which have just, you know, the vegetables have got faces on, and then she's put these faces oh, on. Yes, I haven't seen that, on. yes. Yeah, so it just was really, it's really fun, but it's also got a slight darkness to it. Hasn't it, it? has. It's yes, yes. It's, it's like a sort of classic folk, folk tale, isn't it? Yeah. I wish I knew if it was a, a reference to an old folk tale, or is has she invented her own? Yeah. You know? Or whether it's got a political relevance as well. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Irina. And this one is from Chris in America. Very typical American um, uh, uh, hip image. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has got something to say about that one, but it's great. It's great. And I just, it's, I, I just love it. Yeah. The envelope is lovely as well, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of quite bold, and um, I don't know. Somehow, it just I quite like the contradiction between this New York eleventh floor thing and this quite I don't know if it's the uh, uh, yes, or a countryside a... image or you know landscape image. It's yeah, it's got a lot, there's so much going on. It's and it's very very vibrant, lovely. It doesn't seem to be an inner city image, does it? No, really? but um, you know, good. Um, uh, this is from, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where this is from. I think this was from Portugal. Or, I or think it's I think yeah. Indonesia again, actually. I think oh, it's it? another okay. one. Yeah. yeah, but again, um, wonderfully evocative of that um, airmail envelope um, with its characteristic diagonal stripe um, and, and, and wonderful sort of doodling, which is great. This is what is so freeing by uh, drawing on a reused piece of paper because you don't be you don't feel inhibited at all about what you draw you just doodle what first comes into your head and uh, it is delightful and uh, yeah I don't know whether you use tipex or <laughs> but something that happened to be around yes because it looks very scratchy doesn't it it's mm. sort of, yeah and uh, and again this is another um, lovely airmail um, piece with using collage and found edges um, and uh, a, a strangely empty postcode. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, you don't, you don't feel very confident that it would have actually got there. Although there is something going on. Hill end on the side. I found this one intriguing because I, I wasn't sure if it was printed on or it'd been put through a printer with a sort of window a sort of like using a window image where the window might have been on the envelope I don't yes know. it would be interesting yeah. to see the real thing wouldn't it mm. um but again with the title longing um yes it 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 evokes this this uh uh, so need to make contact. More a sense of looking out the window. Mm. Yeah, the window. Longing yeah. For something, you know, the, during lockdown. Yeah. Longing to be outside. Side. Yeah. Or to travel, maybe. Longing yeah. To travel. Yeah. Uh, this one is the first one of a series of more graphic pieces where um, the envelope has been very carefully. Uh, incised and uh, uh, little triangular flaps opened up to reveal um, more inside textures of envelopes. And then again, you know, some fractured words um, appearing as well, which is, I love all those textures and the very organized groupings of the freely cut I would say um, uh, windows but uh, no great one yeah I think we all got quite fascinated by all the different kind of patterns and because sort of camouflage patterns inside of the envelopes and we and the semi-obscured words yeah, yeah. 
that you find yourself um, make the you know in, in, interpreting. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, this is a lovely one by Jill Vegas, who's a, a printmaker, and uh, I think she's either created this stamp or, or found a stamp that's wonderfully appropriate um, for the envelopes. Um, and uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, giving, giving a message, obviously, um, in these times of pollution and, um, and uh, no, the brilliant uh, awareness campaign envelopes. Because I'm assuming that's a waterboard envelope, but it might not be. But it, I know I, I, I assumed it was, but, but it uh, might just look like water. That background, it does, yes, inspired, yeah. And the other one has got that little tax it or lose it thing. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, no, no, that that's um, there's it's a nice pair. Mm. <laughs> uh, this is Pam Aldridge's again um, on the subject of global warming and pollution uh, and how uh, our, the polar bears and the wolves are all having to go elsewhere um, out of their habitat into the suburbs to um, find forage for food. Um, and she's, she's actually found this piece of text that says move to the suburbs, which is great, utilising the window form. I love that because it's, you know, move to the suburbs sounds very kind of quiet and relaxed, doesn't it? And it's actually, you know, there's bears and wolves. It's actually so, rather yeah. desperate, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Ah, and this one is, is I almost get the impression that um, uh, Geraldine is drawing from her window. Um, yes, um, that, that's me, actually. I'm um, oh. in the car. Um, on the island of Weest in the, the Hebrides. Brilliant. Uh, he's called Ben Becker at the moment, so I don't know whether it might cut out any minute, but uh, that was done in Cornwall um, yeah. in that month that we were um, asked to do it. And uh, mm. kind of quite a quick sort of pencil formal study, which is a bit unlike me, but uh, it's kind of satisfying just to look at the shade and the roads and the buildings. and. Um, make it a bit sort of solid I suppose um sort of solid but I also I really like the shadow of your camera as well um sort of matching the window of the envelope um uh, adds another dimension to it as well which is great well, I'm glad you said that because uh, I was slightly bothered by that window and I was thinking <laughs> no, I like it so that's very encouraging because you know you always have an area where you think could I think about this a bit longer than I am and I'm not so um yeah that's what I wanted to hear that's very kind <laughs> thank Excellent. you um and this one is by Lenny Saunders which is an envelope I think he designed quite a while ago I don't think he did it specifically for um the open call but he's entered it and it is it's a great little image um, of a airmail air style envelope that you, you can write on one side of the envelope and uh, fold it up and send it off um, as the crow flies. Um, and uh, I like the way he's inserted a miniature little envelope mm. um, on the other side. And it's a great, a great image. I good. love the 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 we at the top as well. It's just yes, yes, it just yes. gives it more movement, doesn't it? As well, it does. It's it's very lively. Um, and here is a wonderful one, um, very simple of Rowena's, but again she mentioned this as well that the window of the envelope evoked to her um, the 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 train, the shape of the train windows that were used for the evacuation of um, Ukrainian refugees. Um, and uh, it's very, very poignant how she's managed to select those, the, the, the image to insert here. And, and even the lining paper again has that sort of uh, wire netting, um, controlled, 
crowd control sort of um, vibe to it, whereby queues of people would have had to probably wait behind such walls uh, before entering the train. Yeah, and the, the you know, the, the torn edges, because I know that some of us yeah. were trying to open our envelopes very carefully <laughs> and not always succeeding, but actually the torn edges in this one are perfect, aren't they? Perfect, yeah, absolutely. And I love how this is just using the window. Um, yeah, nothing yeah, else. That's yeah. what she's focused on there. And I just, you know, it, there's such a contrast to Lenny's one before. It, it just shows you the sort of the range of yeah. kind of work that came in. I just think it's incredible. Mm. Oops. Oh, and uh, Judith's, um, oh, have we got that? Yeah, Judith's lovely envelope, which is typically really for her. I like the way in this case, the way she has um, uh, cut the outer edge um, very crisply um, to contrast with the window with its softened round uh, corners. But here, this is so, so typical of Judith's work where um, she's utilizing these little tiny cell shapes that, um, from the inside lining and coloring them in, in very separately with different tones of colour um, and even the outside is done in a very systematic mark making way um, which is very typical of her work. Lovely piece. And then this one with um, Sebastian Rowlands. Uh, this is one of the earliest ones I think that came in um uh and uh again very simple but quite a powerful sort of image this um with his uh high heeled shoes stuck on the front do not ignore this um uh and the domestic shapes behind um i think he, he he's very much wanting to um communicate this that the inner and the outer and how he wants to present himself do not ignore this i think it's it's quite a strong phrase mm. lovely jack Beatty. um <laughs> this isn't even mine but of course it is hers um very typical of her work utilizing um collage and a wonderful piece of uh, house of commons note paper and envelope goodness knows how she came about having this piece of paper i don't know um but uh probably the most useful thing that's ever been done with the house yes, of commons exactly note paper yeah, I love this. I love the I love the stamp on the piece, the paper that it's set on as well. There's that little embossing, the embossing. Yeah. Um, it just I can't work out what's drawn, what's printed, what's cut. It, it's just it's, it's very well very done. well blended. Yeah. And, and this tightening of the screw, I think, is quite a uh, interesting image, isn't it? Mm. Great piece. And in complete contrast, this much more uh, expressive in a different, in, in terms of the material, use of the materials. Uh, again, you know, I think it's in oil pastels, but um, uh, spontaneous, I should imagine, um, piece of work that um, has been made just there and then spontaneously, probably on receipt of uh, the open call. I think, you know, she, she would, um, Helen has decided to make a piece straight away and evokes a landscape to me. Um, there is a, a sort of a dress peeping through as well. But um, no, it's quite a it's a really sort of palimpsest type piece, isn't it, really? About wondering what is underneath there. Yes. And of course, it's the whole envelope. So 
you know, there's an element of it still being a container. Mm. The path to the old oak, here we are. Yes, I, 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 I didn't see that title for a minute. Great. This is such a wonderfully uh, strong shape, quite an unusual shape uh, for a sort of card envelope. Um, and I love the way the shape's so defined and, and uh, it, it, it's typical of the, sh it, it, the shape of the envelope and the style of the work is great. And what does it say in the middle? Text. But there is no text, but uh, no, it's great. It's a lovely piece. Um, this is another one that is really, I suppose, not an envelope, but a carton. Um, but John McKee, he's utilised the entire shape to fill in uh, and incorporate his very typical style of work right to the very edges. It's great. With a bit of collage in the middle. <laughs> and uh, no, it's lovely. And I like the way he's managed it on the on the beige. It, it shows it up, picks it out beautifully. Great piece. I'd like to see it actually. It'd be quite interesting to see it folded up as a box as well. Mm. Um, another birds, quite a strong theme actually in, in this. We've got a few birds being entered. Because um, in a way, I suppose a, 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 a letter does appear to fly through the air from one place to another. <laughs> and so it's rather good. And you've got a lot of, um, again, postage paraphernalia appearing behind. But strangely um, blended, so it, it, it's quite difficult to see whether they're collaged on or painted on. I think they're just painted on. The magpie. Yeah, in gold. Oh, because six, six for gold. Six for gold. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Another very thoroughly covered. Um, drawing, very much in the spirit of Margaret Mellis. Right. And our first one utilising a bit of stitch. Um, it was, it was, I was um, very pleased to see this one. Because, um, you know, stitch is, it, it, machine stitch works very well on paper. Um, and it seems to be wonderfully sort of freehandly um, stitched onto the paper with, I think maybe other collaged paper or even fabric. I think the central bits might even be printed. I think they're printed fabric from something else she was doing, but I love the way she stitched and hand stitched. the envelope as well. Yeah. yeah. The, top, it's... the red thread looks to me as though it's hand stitched. Mm. Yeah. And utilizing the, again, the, the grey lining texture. <coughs> Catherine Gutch. This is a lovely one by Trish Grinham, who has uh, used the envelope very much as a spontaneous um, uh, stream of consciousness drawing. And I think it's lovely. Um, Full of character and and the torn edge is so peculiarly different from <coughs> the typical torn edge when you put your thumb in the envelope and drag along this is a very sort of nibbled I like it <laughs> it evokes to me the um the 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 wonderful coiled cable of the old-fashioned telephone it, it feels like it's a drawing that was made while while you were on the phone, doesn't it? Sort of like yes, yes. not really yes. listening, but doing a drawing and saying yes to your mother or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. No, it's and good. she did not sleep for two years. I think that's quite interesting. 
again a slight sort of fairy tale element to it oh. and similarly this one has um uh, you know when you need a piece of paper to jot down a telephone number um and uh and then you carry on doodling and i like the way this drawing has carried on over the shiny surface of mm. the window and where the pen hasn't kind of worked quite so well but you can still see the line um well and it makes him look sort of naked underneath doesn't it it's yeah, like yeah. It, it just gives you a 3d element to him the little yeah. man running it's yeah it's, yeah it's almost like it's a little x-ray window or something yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true like those dreadful glasses that were, were assumed to um, strip people naked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, here's another one. Um, uh, Patrick Creedon, very philosophical this is. Um, he's really uh, exploring some quite complex ideas, um, which I don't quite understand, but... Um, I'm sure he's working something out uh, through this FedEx Express <laughs> envelope. And it's interesting, you know, you've got the two, uh, the, the, the FedEx, well, I presented it this way. I, I don't know whether it, he would have preferred it to be um, presented the other way, but it seemed to say to me that it should be this way. It's an interesting envelope anyway, because there's text going all ways, aren't there, on it as well. So it is, actually, because there's envelopes mm. on, on the opposite uh, way up to the writing. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Uh, another stream of consciousness doodle um, by um, Finton, Casey Knight and Maud. Uh, Maud has done the, um, the text piece and her son Finton um, the drawing and uh, they, they sort of go together rather interestingly. Um, <laughs> I, I quite like the, the, the three dots as the, the therefore shorthand <laughs> as well as the the, the, the the concepts that are being explored here. Um, it's got some funny little interpretations of, of uh, communication signals. Mm. This is a fabulous, really well thought out piece of Trump lawyer, I suppose, mm. with the collaged axe. Um, works so well and the shards of paper on, on, on the tanned background. Mm. Very, very strong, strident piece. I just love the way it's so three dimensional, isn't it? The way yeah. she's got the movement and yeah, it's, a, it's really good. I think um, this piece she's got into um, another exhibition now really? in the Brixton Open, which is on, I think next week. So yeah, she's um, fabulous. Um, really pleased to kind of push the work forward for her, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. I, I am thrilled to hear that these piece, uh, people are, you know, subsequently take uh, running with the ideas that have come from this. Mm. It's great. Um, no, I'm thrilled that uh, they've been gone, gone forward with this. Uh, this is lovely. The first of quite a few where the envelope has been used as a container. Um, I love the fact that it's been scrunched up, um, or ready almost to be discarded, and then and it's got great opened out again. Three-dimensional quality, hasn't it? Wonderful three D, yeah. um, and 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 all the surfaces have been treated. You know that the contents have have had this sort of ink strained quality to them. Uh, the shadow on to to show the inside of the envelope, uh, and of course, you know we don't quite get what's in. It's a different language for a start, but um, it's all 
nothing is really revealed and yet it's so very present. It's a great piece. And really beautifully photographed as well, I think, yeah, so with, you know, to give that 3D shadow and... On all the creases as well, yeah. as well as the shadow, yeah. Nice and crisp. Um, similarly, this one um, has been very nicely photographed, uh, revealing the hibernating squirrel. It's great with all those torn edges. And interesting, because if the, the envelope had, had torn edges as well, it, as well, it might have detracted from the hole in the middle of the envelope. And I like the fact that the edges on this, in this instance are um, edited out. Yes, um, it's, it's clean, isn't it? It's clean, but then the torn edges show that, that uh, the secret hiding place of the squirrel. Yes, it, uh, it, yeah. it kind of preserves that kind of, yeah. you know, the intimacy and fragility inside, doesn't it? It's not yeah. like, oh, it's all been torn. It's no, yeah. just peering in. And, then, and, and, the, and the, the loud but tentative, please do not bend. Mm. <laughs> but it's written quite large. It's quite good. Excellent. That's Emma Donovan. Mm. Um, like the great... A, a, a nice, it's interesting envelope displayed horizontally like that. Um, I don't think we had any sort of uh, document envelopes um, with this very spontaneous Van Gogh style uh, crows flying through the landscape. I love this. I think it, it looks like it's been um, painted all over, but there's still a little uh, bit of something coming through, um, you know, and then the fact it's been photographed on what looks like canvas. I think it's just a really nice... <laughs> that's true, it's lovely. Yeah. Great one. And this is Wendy's piece. Um, and I'd like someone else, to actually, to who knows her work better, who can explain... Um, a bit more. I mean, you know, I love the fact that it's yeah. so uh, scrunched and textured. But yeah, with it's a very real... fine drawing on it. Well, it yes. So she. Oh, wonderful. She's um, unfortunately she was going to be here this evening, but she'd been unable to come along. Um, but I'll, I'll just read out a few bits. But oh, her... I knew you'd have some text. About yeah. It. So. Um, from, from what I understand about Wendy Ann's practice, she's based in Brighton. Um, it's very much a drawing practice. And I, I, I took this from a conference her website or something, but I really like it anyway as an artist to say, um, the process is you just keep on drawing, keep on drawing when you're bored with it, keep on drawing when you don't like it anymore, <laughs> keep, on, keep on drawing when you like it again, keep on drawing when you're not sure where it's going, keep on drawing when you think you know where it's going, and then it turns out not to be going in that direction. Just keep on drawing until you've covered the whole of the paper, which I pretty much have now, and just keep on drawing because very few things in life feel better than this. I absolutely love that quote. But yeah. um, this is um, a, a, a series of work she's been doing about topo topography. So I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and um, was partly inspired by um, seeing her dad's mental and emotional landscape gradually eroded through vascular dementia, oh. in increasingly deaf as well as increasingly confused. Um, writing him letters had become an important way of maintaining connection with him, um, you know, because of this thing where he can keep going back to it and rereading it. Um, and the drawing is on the back of a vintage envelope that had been made um, in the three weeks following his death. Um, and it's, I think the title of it is actually Bardo, and um, which in Tibetan Buddhism is the name for the liminal space between mm. lifetimes, but can also be any transitional space that we encounter in life, including the state of bereavement. So I think it's really beautiful that, and mm. the fact it, it did start off as a very clean flat piece, and then she then did the scrunching to give it the, sort of landscape movement um, feel yeah. to it. Which it certainly <laughs> has, yeah. And, and uh, 
following on from her first statement, it transforms it. You know, when you think you finished it, you there is yet more transformation you can add to it. Yeah. Yes. And it's that really key thing, isn't it, as an artist, when you don't know whether you've finished or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the same vein, uh, this is a piece by Philomena, who um, her first piece was far too big. In fact, this piece, when she first um, made it, uh, was was uh, too larger than the dimensions that I suggested um, as, as a, a limitation. So she carried on with it and cut it up mm. further. So um, uh, although it's sort of losing some of its envelope qualities, it's still there. Um, and she has uh, overlapped the pieces, but revealed the pieces um, and, and carved holes in the pieces and flaps in the pieces and very typical of her style too of being very colourful all her work has is very vibrant and uh, uh, oh, it's lovely that you can just see little hints of the text there's something that says yeah. down mom um, yeah. it, and as well as this sort of partial drawings that have sort of been destroyed but become something else yeah so uh, in a way, it was quite interesting that, um, you know, she had to reduce it in size, um, that, that it, it, it took on another form, a bit like, in a way, the previous mm. um, Wendy's one. Uh, and Sharon's, lovely, I presume, um, dipped, uh, a piece of paper dipped in slip, Maybe. Oh, yes. is, Sharon, is Sharon here tonight or not? I know she was going to try to, but she I'm not sure if she's here. She on. was going to try, but she's I'm, not here. No, that's, that's fine. Right. She's she's on residency in Portugal, but it's actually oh. um, plaster, which is oh, something that I know she does use quite a lot, sort of um, very simple materials. Um, and I, I, I believe what's happened is by sort of putting a plaster over the envelope, it's kind of uh you know the print has um come out onto the plaster which is just fabulous isn't fabulous. it fabulous yeah the oil-based biro whatever is seeping through mm. the plaster um but it's changed the nature of the uh crumpled paper to something much more solid um softened some edges but hardened others again nicely photographed as well it's lovely yeah This piece, I think it was the very first piece that was um, uh, submitted and uh, I love it. Evelina, is she here tonight? She's just had to go. She could oh, only well. stay till Today. seven, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Um, I love the piece, the fact that it's um, uh, on its, a, a number, uh, the square envelope is opened out so that it forms a diamond shape. So it's, 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 uh, less stable and then of course the cutout image makes it less stable again um but leaving uh uh the the the, the absence of the, the the previous it's like a moment in time like the little figure is is moving from its base but only yeah. in, in fact to reveal an actual address which is uh, intriguing and of course, it's titled Absence, and it, it, it conveys that really well. And I love the sort of something shiny, something shiny. I like the, the, the matte, and there's lots of different textures there too. The shiny on the stamp, postage stamp, and the sort of weird misplacements of bits and pieces. Mm. The fact that the drawing again is like coming away from the envelope again, it's very fugitive. And again, this piece is very like the Margaret Mellis with the shape, like finding these lovely shapes yeah. sort of be a starting point. Yes, it's, it's often quite old fashioned envelopes that open in that way. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, here's another one, of course, mm. um, doing exactly the same thing. Um, 
a wonderful gesture described here, uh, perfectly fitting for this diamond shape. But of course, the drips as well. Now, what's the? It doesn't have a title. Um, well, the, the, title, um, title. the title is um, Still No Letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Very you good. Know, she's waiting. She looks pissed yeah. off. It's <laughs> like indignant. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the fact it's there is no letter, but it's on an envelope. It's just got so much kind of meaning to it. Yeah. Oh, I love these pieces. He, he put in two pieces, both with. Uh, Almost like women looking at each other from the two envelopes, actually. Yeah. Really lovely. Through the window, one was, wasn't it? Mm. But again, and the drip, the drip of the ink wash too evokes, you know, that, um, uh, you know, looking through uh, a rain uh, streaming down a window. It's, it's full of emotion, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. This again um, evokes a bit of the Margaret Mellis style of envelope um, and utilizing the entire shape. I love the way um, that the, the landscape that, that turns around 360 degrees. It's got lots of Alice in Wonderland type. Um, imagery on yeah there. sort of mythical imagery isn't it it's um i know it's, it's called um sorry if i say this wrong but it's called gorgon no uh which is based oh, on william blake's mapping of an imaginative realm um, ah um, right okay so um it's sort of uh i did have some other bits of thing about it so i think w if you read that blake wrote about it but that she went on some um I think it was a drawing workshop which was using that as the starting point and um so you have something in the center um like a mandala uh, type I yes and yeah. then the, you have these four areas north south east and west which all mean something slightly different and this was her take from that oh yeah um uh, and she's a yeah she's a very accomplished painter but i absolutely love this piece i think it's really interest really intriguing yeah oh great uh, one again of a series of very graphic pieces. Um, so this is Sarah. Are you still here tonight, Sarah? Because I wondered if she would like to speak to it. Because you you are a text artist, aren't you normally? Yeah, I am here. I'm half listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over to oh, you I, then. I am listening. I yeah, I suppose I'm graphic. I I'm not a conceptual artist. I don't have a big, you know theory or concept behind what I do. Um, I am primarily a textile artist or that's my background but right. currently my work has been exploring what I could do with paper and it's actually quite interesting about how many processes you can throw at it and be quite destructive and it still maintains its overall integrity. Mm. Um, this piece I made into addition, made in addition to another body of work that I'm working on with another group which was based around the concept of resilience. So mm. the idea was you took something and I've been working with actually paper bags rather than envelopes. And so you start with a bag and you subject it to different processes. And while it's clearly changed, it's still clearly a paper bag. So you could rebuild it. Um, and it was meant to be, it's kind of a, I'm saying I'm not conceptual, but the idea was that actually as people certainly during covid we all went through you know sometimes some quite harrowing experiences and we're still people at the end of it but we've we've been somehow changed by that yeah by that process um so they're meant to be two-sided this does actually have stitch on it i did check that circle is, is actually stitch sometimes i just make oh, it off. Is. yes yeah so is sometimes that sealing wax is that sealing wax that it's been yeah it, it's Brilliant. actually quite interesting it is it was an envelope that contains a wedding invitation, which is why it has a wax. You know, somebody had made a great deal of effort, you know, because it was the wedding invitation. Mm. Um, and as my work in the main body outside this has progressed, one of the things I wanted to do was post something to myself. So I'm actually keen at some point to make this, because it is still a complete envelope, is to actually, the next thing would be to post it to myself. Mm. Um, and I'm assuming that through that process, it will become 
further distorted and battered and that'd be interesting mm -hmm. to see yeah how, how yeah, that also affects life it. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's been interesting that you you've kind of had envelopes which have been used multiple times um i thought oh kind of there's quite a connection there you know mm. but that was out of necessity for me this is more of a oh what would happen if because that's very much what inspires what i do what would happen if yeah yeah, I love the detail on it. It just looks um, very, I just, you know, I'd like to see that in the flesh, that it's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's got quite a few holes. You know, I've deliberately, it's got pin pricks in it that don't contain stitch. So there is more mm. texture than that. And the wor and the worn bit on the top corner where maybe in the stamp was. It is actually, yeah, it is actually the stamp is, is still there. And it's oh, interesting right. by what's already on the paper mm. on the other side, because that's, the, this is the inside of the envelope does affect the way that the paper then behaves on the other side. I was quite mm -hmm. disappointed that that you can't see the, the image because it's been sandpapered. It's, you know, it's, it's been oh, properly right. sandpapered and rotary sanded and all sorts of things oh, cool. to um, to get that kind of distressed. And that's why I say that it's how amazing paper, how resilient it is actually. Mm. It takes a bit of battery. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's lovely. Oh, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Sure. Thank you. Oops. Uh, and here's another one um, that has a, has very contained and decisive uh, thought through lines and forms. Very finely balanced. I like this one. And as well as the black, the very dense black, which I presume is stenciled um, because it's so crisp and perfect. Mm. But I like the brown, the, the, I don't know whether it's shadow or just um, a wear shadow. Yes, uh, and the little bits of spotting and sort of... Yeah, flecking. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it's sprayed. I think it's sprayed through yeah. the pencil. Oh, yes, I think you're right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I love those sort of. Uh, it, again, this is it's got. Quite an unusual shape. It is. Yeah, maybe it is a more of a box. But I like the. Um, they're, they're reminiscent of the darts. When you have a, a, a pattern for a bodice, the darts uh, are very much those sort of shapes. Hmm. Alexander. And uh, this piece is great because it's obviously being cut up and reassembled. It's very clever. Very clever. Because I don't know whether it's woven, in fact. It even looks as though a bit as though it's woven. Not yeah, it's sure. interesting. Those the three you've just shown with Sarah's as well, is that they've all got this grid, haven't they, behind yeah. them as the sort of source. But yeah, it does definitely look woven. Yeah, it really distorts whatever was on it before. It's wonderful. It probably said Amazon or something on it, and now yes, I don't yes, know what yes. it's a much better. <laughs> And now it's much more interesting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a curious title for this one, Fridge Poem. Fridge Poem. <laughs> Maybe, yes, he, he put a magnet behind it and stuck it on the fridge. <laughs> Angela's lovely piece. Uh, again, very much her practice, wonderfully transferred onto paper because um, normally she needs a boisterous, stout surface to work on. Um, Did you want to say anything? I think you were there, Andrew. I don't know if you still are. I can't I see No, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Pat. I just, um, when you talked earlier about freedom and just doing things with not worrying about it. I didn't yeah. really expect the paint to work on paper, so it kind of gave me loads of freedom. I didn't expect anything. But actually, um, as a lady said before, paper is surprisingly tough. And uh, yeah, I kind of expected it to crinkle and not be able to take the paint at all, but it did. And the folds, you can't really tell so much in this one, but the folds really sort of 
helped me as well because they, they led, well, you can see the bend of the paper made the paint bend a bit. Um, and then the folds kind of Thickly. led the paint wherever it wanted to go, really. Yeah. Um, but it was nice on this one to work on the on the brown. Um, that gave it like a kind of a more natural feel against the sort of industrial nature of my paints, really. Um, but yeah, it's a great, great process. Mm -hmm. I'm very oh, is this using about. your That's new your your new method of using the, the less uh, paint? Yes, it was. It yeah. was actually. It's water based, and maybe that's helped a little bit because the oil based would probably just eat through the paper. Yes. It? Um, but yeah, that's true. That I, I bet that did help. Yeah. 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 I love the shape. It looks very female, human. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's got a sort of regal. <laughs> Real presence. Um, Abbey Stockbridge. Yes, this is a, a very thorough covering. I think I think this is the most thoroughly covered one. It's lovely. Um, and it I don't know whether it says amber salad or, but it's certainly like a salad of colour. Mm -hmm. And I love this shape that is um, camouflaged within, um, like a fish shimmering through the water. Um, that it's a shape that's definitely causing an effect on its background. Mm. And then... Okay, and the background is reminiscent of the kind of textures you get on the inside of the... Yeah, objects. it is. Um, and, and, and then isolating this word auntie. Yeah, great. <laughs> so maybe she's an auntie. Um, and the envelope was originally addressed to her. Oh, yes. Um, no, great piece. This, it seems, to, I think it was the, uh, the most the largest 3D <coughs> piece, I think, that was entered that had lights and all sorts going on inside a box, I think. Um, but I like this image the best because um, it, 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 it was less about the exterior shape and more about the paper surface um, with this great illumination behind. Well, and about the collaging of, of the windows, the, you know, yeah. like what you see and what you don't see. Well, exactly, very elusive image and and text. Does it have? Yeah, rainy backdrop. Doesn't have a a title. I can't remember. No, I can't remember either. But um, and again, the very cold Additional space between the two calories, like. Cool exterior with this burning hot interior. Art oh, June, great piece again, typical of your latest work um, with smoke drawings, um, and and I love the way you've used the inner lining paper to create this uh, origami creature that's flying yes it, it was a, a chinese envelope and originally i tried to fold the whole thing but it was a bit too thick and i couldn't do it and um so i opened it out again took the lining off and i thought oh i can just do that and it's a it's a phoenix and uh which suited my of course, use of smoke. Smoke. Yeah. of course i had to quickly um i did burn the edges if you go in closely you can sort of see and uh it's a bit hazardous using smoke. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I had to sort of, sort of damp it out quickly. And then, <laughs> I stuck it on there. then I stuck it back on the smoke there. So yes. yeah. But that was about my third envelope because um, you said um, I always panic a bit when when there's a prompt, you know, because you say, oh, it makes you, it frees you up an envelope. You don't have to worry about it. Then I immediately started worrying about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And did three completely different envelopes, but I mean, eventually, once yeah. I got going. But yeah, that was a slightly hazardous one because it was rice paper as well. 
but it is managed right. to sort of not burn the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it works very well. No, great piece. Oh, lovely. And uh, and this is the piece by Karen Tilly. Um, yes, this haunting figure inside uh, the window um, with this sort of blank grey background, uh, really sort of entrapped behind this wall. Um, very lost, um, you know, it's an appeal, isn't it? I think that's what it is, it's an appeal. Yeah, it, it, it is. But it looks very. There's something very dark about it, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. But again, I think this thing where you just use this window, it's it's really powerful way of using the envelope, isn't it? Um, yeah, and and these these I think I presumed um, the text was was on the original envelope. Um, so again, you know, it's it's such a surprise, isn't it? What you feel, mm. find inside? Um, yeah. Right. Kiki Stickle. This, um, of course, this is a completely obscured window, taped and drawn on, and uh, yes, completely obscured. Yeah. It's, so. Maybe there was something under there that has been covered up. It's Kiki here. I think did going. I see did I see you here or I don't know if she's still on. No, I don't think no. No. I love the drawing though. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And yes, the tape. Did she put the tape on or yeah, it looks like masking tape, which again, if you think of the word masking tape, mm. yeah, it's it's um it's great. Yes, it's a good, powerful image. And Kathleen King, is she here? Um, I don't think so. No. A great piece of intense. Well, again, this looks like a bit of jiffy. It's got a, a polythene li a, a quilted lining, which is very interesting. Um, and then this um, intense machine stitching. Which is, very, is, is, uh, which, which is overstitched and overstitched, um, which is a, an envelope. I, yeah, I've never seen one quite like that. It's a bit like corrugated cardboard, only the equivalent in paper. Yeah. It's an open uh, jiffy bag, isn't it? Mm, I think it is, yeah. But maybe the surface removed, so you've got an even, yeah. yeah. Right. Ah, oh, now <clears throat> this is um, Susan Hamer's. Um, this has been very intensively worked on, hasn't it? As a part of a piece of research work that she's done on, uh, is it wartime? Nikki, you know, um, is it, I don't know if Susan's here, but I don't want to steal um, it under. Right, yeah, sorry. Yes, go on, you go for it, because I've got notes, but I'd rather you well, said. The original um, piece was um, um, two drawings, pen and ink drawings, of, uh, down at Cutmere Haven, the tank barriers. Mm. Um, so I just sort of used, you know, the envelopes as um, sort of windows, really, to sort of make new selections, and so a bit really how I work a lot in my own practice. Um, so using the, you know, an envelope as a sort of new frame, um, it's quite a natural thing to do really, sort of make a new selection and sort of abstract the images a bit more. I also like the recycling idea, a bit of a pun on yeah. recycling yeah. more images out of, you know, one image <laughs> sort of thing. So um, did what you... is a continuous image going behind? The... Um, no, no, it's, it's sort of the original two drawings, I, Copied and um, you know cut up a bit, collaged and okay you know, behind. Okay. So those are stuck on, are they? As opposed to being, yeah. I wasn't sure if you'd cut out windows and yeah. Well, some of it is, some of it, but um, that one particularly was more collaged than the others. Yeah, mm. yeah. So lovely, really lovely set. Those mm. great. 
um, and this, oh, and this one, Sheila Hayes one. Now this is a ceramic piece and apparently, I think um, uh, she's made an addition of them. So I think she's made quite a few. Okay. Sheila, are you, are you there? Are you able to have a chat? I am, but I don't know how to. <laughs> we'll see, we can hear you. <clears throat> Pardon? Um, do you want to just talk about what the process was? I know we've spoken about it, but just to share. Um, it's just recycling. So it's recycling, so it's porcelain and the paper repulped and then remade. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. you can, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just about process. Um, we were, I know when we looked at this when we were doing the selection, we were really intrigued how the, um, the inner uh, pattern of Lightning. the envelope had stayed intact. I'm assuming it's been fired. It is, yeah. So and that's, it's fully fired, so it's translucent. So I just replicated that pattern. It, it's not an actual print. Oh, it, okay. It's using some fine net that's pressed onto the flat sheet of porcelain. Oh. And then some cobalt rubbed in. So it's got all that blue and white porcelain thing. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's amazing. That the envelopes have, and um, you can't quite see that I haven't quite achieved my intention <laughs> with this, but there is a glass panel that's fired on to the front of the envelope, uh, but it was a bit frail. So I've got to work on that, but it's an actual very thin, um, like picture glass that's fired on. So it's got a glass window. So it's going to have a shine surface. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Has it got volume? Could you put anything in it? It has got a slight volume. It's not completely flat. So yeah. it, it's, um, and some of them have got more volume. So it's that reference to a vessel as yeah. well. Yeah. A porcelain vessel uh, envelope. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess it's more about um, how it's made. It's all about how it's made because like the pattern and then folding it back in and remaking it and what the materials are yeah so that's what um got me going on that one and the, and the fact that it's paper clay as well you know it, it's extraordinary because you can roll it 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 makes clay really strong um in its plastic form so you can literally make it paper thin that's wow. wonderful. Yeah, we love them. So have you carried on making them, Sheila, since this? I've got some, um, I haven't done them anymore. I did have a little series, mm. but I mean, with a push, I'd love to carry on and get the glass component. So completely transparent, although mm. it's slightly muted because it has to rest on alumina in the kiln, so it's slightly um, uh, muted and pitted, which is nice. Mm, that's, that's wonderful. Really yeah, wonderful. intriguing. Mm, Thank you. Fantastic process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and this one um, is 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 uh, Shripana's. Um, a, a, a lovely piece that um the envelope is there but it's it's wonderfully layered and uh and you you really feel that the bits of collage newspaper and um all the different textures <coughs> applied to the envelope um have really had a bit of life you know they may have even um, they've been around for some time. They've really got an age and a patina to them. <clears throat> and even the fabric um, seems uh, to be, yes, had had a previous life. 
Um, and and, and if you, the more you look at some of the pieces that you can see the layering, how the, the bottle shape is on top of the, the frill. I'm not sure whether it's stitched or stuck. But yes. It's intriguing. There's lots of yeah. different things going on, aren't there? This is another piece from India, I think it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, That's lovely. Right. I'm just going to give you a time check to yeah. sort of move it a bit quicker so we've got time to hear from Robert as well. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yes, this is another jiffy envelope, um, but uh, wonderfully um, quilted and uh, stitched. Um, you, you really got this sort of feeling of a quilt that it's like if it was much larger, it would be <laughs> like, like, I suppose it's got a bed shape to it as well um, you could imagine it being um a duvet <laughs> yes and uh, i like the diva mail. yeah diva mail it's great <laughs> excellent um stephanie's did three or four pieces um inspired by other artists referencing other artists work this being um ben nicholson um, but I love all the textures and the muting of the, the stamp and the card and how they then become a unified surface. It's great. I think this is quite interesting as well, just hearing what Sarah said about what she was planning on doing, um, wanting to send something to herself, because this is what yeah. you did, Steph, didn't you? You sent all your pieces you posted back to yourself, right. didn't you? Yes, yes, and I used a, a, you can see that name is uh, Cons Holbein, that's actually an anagram of Nicholson. So it's, I, I was sort of uh, trying to tempt the postman into uh, having a crafty look. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I quite enjoyed doing the anagrams of the names, which are yes. all related to artists who, uh, who I was referencing, which was quite fun to do. Yeah. I tried to make the names very comical, so it's a kind of humorous thing. And just the stamps that you select, I mean this one is, is sort of an ordinary type of stamp, but you selected yeah. stamps that went with the work, it was just very well thought through, really, really interesting. Yeah, just, the stamps had to had to some, somehow match, because they were posted to myself, and oh. uh, I did think of it like an exhibition for the postman really. Yes, yes, he would be the prime mm -hmm. audience. Yeah. yeah. He never commented. He never commented. And I didn't quite have the nerve to say, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> oh, dear. Mm. Great. Thank you. Oops, is that the end? That is the, the last. Oh, no, it isn't. Here was a, um, this is another one from India. Um, and again, I think this was had, had a wedding invitation. Um, was part of a wedding invitation, but um, extraordinary textures and yeah. surfaces described here in both drawing and in the physicality of the scrim <coughs> uh, on top of the torn paper. It's a great piece. Um, this one, another one that evokes um, the holiday postcard, um, but reconstructed. All sorts of interesting places and half articulated sentiments. And uh, similarly, this one, you know, has that uh, memento quality about it. Um, as a place visited. Really good placing of the uh, barcodes and things for windows. It, it, yeah, it's really nice. Though. Yeah, yes. Um, Robert, of course, who's here with us, he, he works with the barcode quite well, a lot as well, but uh, his work is not shown tonight, but will be available later. <laughs> and uh, this is um, Andre McDade's uh, another jiffy envelope um, that I think it works on the screen incredibly well because it, mm. it, it gives this effect of, um, you know, moonlight, you know, on the water. Um, and uh, I know she lives 
she lives on the Medway. And so this is um, a view from her, you know, she looks out onto the Medway uh, from her, where she lives. So it's a lovely screen. Um, Kelsey Smith's colourful piece, um, presumably just spontaneously. Uh, I love the 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 um, pop art kind of flaming car. Yeah, yeah it's got a lovely wildness to it. Yeah. With the intense colours, isn't it? Yeah. Together with the eagle on the stamp, you know, it, it's all mm. it wonderfully integrated. Um, Kathleen Dawson's fantastic tanks in the snow again topical you know presumably referencing uh, Ukraine war um, but the envelope with its subtle creases is just uh, so it evokes snow and, and the scarring of the clean pure snow by the the oily polluting tank yeah. Yeah, it's a superb kind of, because it's like, you know, we've seen all these aerial images and it yeah. really captures it in a fantastically simple way. Yeah. And, and, and it, the envelope has evokes the sort of the innocence of the land that is being usurped. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. A great piece. I have a feeling that, oh no, here we go, Lola. Yes. Uh, wonderful this was a wonderful discovery um lola that you made talking about emily dickinson this was inspired by um uh, 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 emily dickinson who apparently um used envelopes as a starting point invariably for some of her very well-known poems were were jottings initially jottings on the backs of envelopes and if you go online you can see these envelopes um with the the beginnings of some of her poems so thank you lola for pointing that one out but this piece in itself has some wonderful textures and surfaces and sentiments on here um i don't know if she's here or what's no to she's not no not. Um, or anyone who knows, because apparently uh, th this was part of a group showing of, um, th th this was a, a, a group of people who, of artists who responded to Emily Dickinson's poem. So I don't know whether it's already been exhibited, but um, great piece. And wonderfully, the, the pink of the envelope, everything is very sort of neutral and natural uh, with the decaying cabbage leaf, but the pink, mm. very flesh, very flesh. Yeah, that, oh yes, that is the, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's wonderful. I don't know if we've got, have we got any other questions from people or shall we if not we'll go straight to Robert is it possible uh because when we had Dory's one up Pat is there any way of getting back to Dory's one because when we were looking at Dory's with yeah. those speech bubbles I was fielding an email uh, from right in the beginning isn't it um, yeah because Gaynor was trying to connect from France and we were trying to get yeah. her on but her her wi-fi was hopeless unfortunately so mm. um but because Dory very kindly sent me the the content of the speech bubbles and I thought we should look at it. Ah, OK. Yeah. And also Roger has joined us now, so I don't know if he wants to say anything about his one when we get to it. Well, again, tell me to stop if we do pass his. Yeah, I will. It's nice actually running through them, um, reminding one of the... the oh, oh, there okay, we go. So that's Dory. Yeah. There we go. So in the in the one on the left, you've got, oh, it's packed just like the summer show at the RA. And, <laughs> yes. these, and these artists certainly have put their stamp on this place. <laughs> yes, they've really delivered, though, there's some appropriation of images. So uh, I just thought there were all these lovely puns. Yeah. And then on the other one, you've got the stamp of Prince Charles and to his right, it says, Mummy, what's that man doing here? 
well, he's a uh, 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 her male. No, no, I mean he's a he's a male. <laughs> ah, well, he's first class anyway, and heir to the throne. <laughs> oh, and is that his car up there? No, that's Frank's car. Ha ha! It's been franked. Local model <laughs> grown. Queen on stamp. We are not amused. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought we had to have those because yeah, uh, a great yeah. deal of work. Well, a great deal of work's gone into all of these envelopes, oh, and it's yeah. uh, really nice. Really fun. Roger, did you want to talk about your envelope? Uh, yes, if you wish. Um, so was that? Yeah, a bit further down, I think. Yeah. It's the um, the waiting for the letter lady. Yeah, hands on hips. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Oops. Uh, the diamond shaped yeah um pieces oops there, there we go. go when i was doing the um uh, uh the work for back of the envelope i very much took two things one one was that uh, all my images including this one were were, were based on the fact that it, uh, an envelope was actually being used. And the other thing was that the, um, the, the, the captions were quite relevant. You couldn't separate the caption from, uh, from the graphics, from the artwork. And uh, on, on this one, uh, I think the title, the title originally was um, something like, Still no bloody envelope. Uh, still no bloody letter. Yeah. And I decided that 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 was um, a better abstract to the, the the word bloody. But the whole <laughs> the whole thinking was, and it was done very very quickly, as you can as you can see. But the whole thing was the exasperation of constantly waiting for something yeah. Which, yeah. which which never arrives, and the the tattiness of the envelopes were there to sort of. Um, uh, help express the frustration of the person who isn't isn't getting the thing. Um, yeah, and it really does. It's yeah. great. Yeah. I love both of those, Roger. I thought they were really good. They sort of speak to each other, don't they, really well? And yeah, yeah. so yeah. much movement in them as well. They love the dripping yeah. ink. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, are we okay, Pat, then, to... Yes, on? I will stop share, and presumably we'll all be able to see each other again. I think we will. Yeah, there Marvelous. we are. Yeah. So we're going to go over to Robert just to talk about um, what ha what's going to happen next, are we? Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. yeah. So as, as Pat mentioned at the beginning, so Edgeland Modern was kind of born during lockdown. It was our desire to have a kind of creative and exhibition space, even though we couldn't really show work to anyone. Um, so now it's relocated to the Creative Enterprise Zone in New Haven. Um, it's going to be open for exhibitions soon. We're just decorating it at the moment. Um, it's not a huge space. In fact, it's quite small. So um, we can't, unfortunately, we won't be able to exhibit all the envelopes as much as we'd love to. Um, so we're gonna, we kind of started to create a short list, um, but there's, because some of the letters have to come from abroad um, and we're not quite sure how, some, how we're gonna curate it, how they're all gonna work together. So it's a kind of loose list that might change with time um, as we come to actually curate the exhibition. Um, so we're hoping... It's to put out requests? Put out requests and then at least within a couple of months to have it up and running for, yeah. For a physical show? For a physical yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's gonna be sort of what, August-ish? Well, we did think maybe we would synchronize it with Art Wave, but uh, I think maybe we'll try and do it before then now. That's the thinking. Hmm. 
because um, Art Wave um, is is not until the beginning of September, so yeah. um, we'd probably okay. like to have it a bit sooner than that. Mm -hmm. But again, it's also holiday season, and we we don't want everyone to be away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. But good, good point. Um, and, and I think we we have another possible opportunity to show the work. So anybody who's here who's done the work, I mean, don't don't bin it or anything. No. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there is there is still hope that we might do another physical exhibition, which might include a lot more of them. So if you haven't heard about the other one, don't sort of don't think it's over because we, we there's still some other opportunities that we're exploring as well, um, which would be great. Samantha's got Samantha. a question. You need to put your voice on. Um, no, I was just thinking, uh, had you thought about you? Um, I mean, obviously I live in Hastings, but had you thought about using the stage? I'm just thinking that would be a really fantastic space to have all of them. Mm -hmm. It's quite big and they're quite little, but it's a possibility. Yeah, but, but, you know, there's so much to see in a lot of them. I mean, it was amazing to see them all in one go. Mm. Mm. Some of them really demand quite a lot of attention. So, uh, you know, if, you, if they were sort of, you know, eye height. Eye height, yeah, so you can see closely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, an idea, that's all. It's, yes. It's no, it's expensive to rent, that's what I mean. It's not, did you say? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so anyway, it's work in progress. Sorry, we've had a little bit of a time issue. There is the stage. That's <laughs> in Hastings on the seafront. On the seafront, okay. It's open, you you say. Yes, they do quite a lot of art shows there or craft fairs. Um, it's it's right, it's sort of almost next door to um, whatever it's called now. Is it Hastings Contemporary? No, oh, right, there. by the Black Sheds. Yes, right by there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, There's, the toilets are there. If you've ever used the toilets, it's there. <laughs> um, essential knowledge. The other thing that um, I wanted to, to present uh, this wonderful collection of slides um, uh, to uh, um, <clears throat> Joe Hill as well because I think it would be wonderful to have it on a, a screen uh, as a continually continually looped series of images at uh, at the Towner. I think that would be wonderful if he was interested in letting that be shown maybe during um, the Brewers International Sure, mm. that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> but, um, as as a, a part of a, a community project that has um, evoked such interest. Yeah, so we're we're not sort of letting it go. We're we're no. still pursuing ideas. It, it's just the time it takes, really, more than anything. And um, but we're we're on it. We're yeah. definitely on it. So, um, <laughs> and I think the other thing we spoke about is we well we don't know what the future is going to be with. Blue Monkey, but um, obviously Edge and Modern is its own uh, team. So, you know, we might do something again next year um, because it did provoke a lot of interest. And we had a lot of feedback from people who wished they had taken part or were very inspired by what they saw. Um, I think people weren't all that with that confidence to take part, but, you know, it, by having an open selection and putting it on Instagram, it really means a lot of people can take part. So. Yeah, we know we might do it again. We shall see. Yeah, there's quite a few comments saying how much people have enjoyed it and how much work's gone into it. And Judy actually said, "Back of an envelope might be the best open submission show I've ever seen because, <laughs> the, en because the envelope thing knits together such disparate elements, visual yeah. and conceptual, and it's very successful in that." You know. Oh, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. yeah. There's one. Uh, there's a specific question here now that Sarah's back at her desk. Uh, from way earlier on, Samantha, Sarah wanted to know what is SoCo? Your uh, thingy. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I saw that earlier on. Um, it's uh, it's it's well, it's South Coast artists. It's uh, we've got a, a website. Um, which is you know www.soco artists I think actually, um, and then there's the Instagram soco underscore artists, uh, and it's just a group of artists. We um, you you can apply to join. You pay a year an annual sub, and uh, and then that gives you access obviously to we put on exhibitions, opens or um, themed. We've just recently. Um, well, we haven't quite finished, got one more week to go. We've just started, uh, well, we did a thing similar to you and it was an open call. And um, the idea is called Relay, Respond, Relay. So it's 
two groups of artists and it started off with giving them a word and that that first artist had to produce within one week a piece of work and then obviously um, send it email it to the next artist in in the in the line and then they produce something in reaction to that previous piece and it's gone on and we had two groups so we're just about to put on a show at the electro um, project studios which is down again it's down in St Leonard's on the seafront um, uh, yeah and it's really exciting I mean it is really interesting it's a similar you know buzz that you get from seeing what you guys have done because it's it's this sort of people reacting in a very um it was quite spot, you know, the spontaneity of it and and the freedom of it. There, the, the the idea was that they worked and did something that they wouldn't necessarily normally do. And for a lot of artists, they don't produce one finished piece. Of <laughs> um, yeah. So that was, it's, it, it's. I mean, I've come along and see it. It's coming. I, you, I'll if you follow Soko artists, you'll see all the. I'd like to be able to give you the dates exactly right now. I should yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to put it on the Instagram. I know I've, I've followed, yeah. um, if you look on the Blue Monkey Instagram, we follow um, uh, Samantha and I both oh. run the Instagrams for each business, or we say art, art yeah. business. So um, we quite often share each other's things. So yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. And um, mentioning uh, Electro Space, Angela, do you want to do a quick plug for Ulysses uh, mm. this weekend? We need you unmuted. So I'm going to leave that to you. Well, I will. If Lucy doesn't want to, I will, but she's the genius behind it. Are you there, Lucy? No, okay. So I will. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, she will. There we are. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Hi. Sorry, I feel a real fake, but I have been listening. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a, you're nothing, nothing like a fake, Lucy. You've been amazingly oh. busy. <laughs> so sorry. Um, sorry, I've been skulking in the background. Um, <laughs> Well, anyway, that was amazing. Um, yeah, Ulysses is back on this weekend. So um, we're doing artist talks between three and five. Um, there'll be quite a big group of us, I think, this time. Um, and it's really just for the artists to connect themselves with the work that's come together. It's not unlike the... Uh, it's not unlike the back of an envelope, you know, lots of artists have come together from different bits of the book and it's actually trying to join the book together through the way they kind of see it and the way they've processed different things. Um, and then on Sunday, um, uh, I'm, we're doing a CD launch, so we've got the band <laughs> is in the yeah. gallery. So, um, so that's really exciting because I haven't done that before. So it's, um, uh, yeah, so there'll be quite a lot of us. Uh, our Norwegian friend is coming back as well. She's a fantastic um, uh, Norwegian folk singer. And she does Molly with me because it references Ibsen's uh, contribution to Joyce's life and work. So it, it's a very obscure reference, but I like it a lot. And I hope we can do um, a walk and talk with Cliff's work as well, because he's done a, a virtual reality piece that goes all the way down to the sea with Joyce, which is um, amazing. So um, I've got an idea for that. Actually, I've got an actress called Nora o Noreen. Noreen O'Connor, she's coming down from London. She's just heard about it. And I think she has a 1920s outfit and I think she'd be amazing to go and walk and talk your, your, virtual, uh, your virtual tour. So yeah, yeah, it's been amazing actually. You know, I, I've, I've brought a lot of people together but there's been so much support for it. It's been lovely. So I'm really humbled by everyone's efforts actually. It's, it's marvellous, isn't it? And I do believe you were mentioned by name by <laughs> President Michael I, I have to say, I don't really know how this happened, but I got a letter <laughs> from the Irish president. So, um, and um, I think he's very excited because I, it's, it's an obvious place for Ulysses to happen along the south coast of England. Yeah. Because as I keep saying, it's, um, it is mentioned in Ulysses, unlike most places in the rest of the world, apart from Dublin. Um, it, you know, Eastbourne is mentioned, these kind of, not actually Hastings, but Eastbourne and... Dover and Seaford and Margate so um, so it's kind of starting and I think they really get that in yeah. the sense that you know the south coast of England is is the bit that's that needs to kind of um, 
well, have its Bloomsday, have, you know, and I'm actually pulling in lots of really interesting references. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Peter Quinnell, I don't know if people know him, he's a Hastings based artist, but his um, his family are mentioned in Ulysses. Oh, wow. They come up in the text. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't been working with him on this exhibition. Yeah. Um, and the other the other obvious reference is Harriet Shaw Weaver, whose great niece now lives in Rye. And um, her aunt was a major patron for the work. And it, it's been an amazing uh, connection to make and I think we'll make more of that because there is a play on in Dublin at the moment and I hope she'll be able to go back there so yeah things like that have come out through through these conversations marvellous and has the band did the band exist before or has that come together around <laughs> well they did but they've sort of grown there was three or four of them and now there's 10 of us <laughs> we're going to fill the whole gallery <laughs> and um but I'm really pleased with the um, I'm really pleased with the CD that we made because Peter Quinnell designed the cover. So it's kind of a fully integrated artwork. And I really enjoy the collaborative aspect of working with music, which I hadn't done before. Yeah. But we had I had an actress over from Dublin for the day, literally, to do Molly's soliloquy in the in the exhibition. And that was amazing as well, because the painters who were in the show kind of went, oh, there's my painting. And now it's a now it's a now it's a theatre space. So that was really lovely. Yeah, so wonderful. So I, I know we've shared it on the Blue Monkey Instagram. I think that's got your little timetable of what's going on at the weekend. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, that's really, so, yeah, um, brilliant, actually. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I have seen those coming through, actually. I'm, yeah, I'm a bit swamped with information at the moment. So you forgive are. me if I haven't <laughs> answered everything. So thank you. Lucy's been coping without sleep for a couple of weeks, I think. She's doing really well. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. It's, um, it's uh, well, the, the other spanner in the works is my, my, my son has got himself virtually expelled from school. So oh, no. that's all going on in the background as well. <laughs> so. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I think we're, I think we're sort of done. It's eight o'clock. Um, so if no, no one's got anything else to say, I'll just say thank you, everybody that took part, and thank you all for coming tonight. Um, if the technologies work, we're going to put it onto our YouTube channel in a few we days' will. time because we had a few people that couldn't make it tonight. So um, thank you. Thank you to Pat. Thank you to Robert. Thank you to Rachel, who's not here, um, which is a bit of a shame. But um, yeah. yeah, marvellous. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to you, Nikki, as well. And um, we'll um, hopefully yeah. be able to show Rachel yeah. listen to our show as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. All right, thank you. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Here we go.